Hey, hey, so welcome to our series of videos where we're going to do small step by step lessons on how to use the relatively new uh, embroidery program, My SoNet. Um, we'll be working in the platinum package today. That's the full uh, full package of embroidery features from My SoNet. Uh, My SoNet is the latest program, software program from the people who bought you uh, originally 3D, 4D, 5D, 6D, 6D Plus, Premier, Premier Plus. Premier Plus Ultra, and now uh, my Sonet. If you have 6D uh, Premier Plus, you'll probably find you can keep up with a lot of this stuff in the lesson. A lot of things will be very similar, um, but you will need the full package to be able to do everything. Alrighty, uh, let's get stuck in. So I have just uh, opened up my Sonet software and chosen a blank canvas, and this is where we've landed here. So it's telling us to choose the hoop size that we want to work with. So you probably have something on your screen looking like this. At the top you have your hoops. You can go ahead and choose what sewing machine you have and what size hoop suits that sewing machine. So I'm going to say I've got myself my fave little brother, which is going to be down the row here. Uh, let's say I've got myself a brother, 4,000. So this is now the listing of the hoops that are available for that 4,000. So I can choose a hoop space that I know is going to work on my machine. It's also really cool. It gives us a little visualization of what the hoop looks like. If I choose this at this point here with it rotated, the hoop is crossways. If I change this to natural, hoop is up and down. But I prefer to enter a hoop size because I prefer to work in terms terms of how big I want the finished design to be. So we're going to work in a small square and I have a hoop that's 180 wide. So I'm going to choose to make my square 180 by 180. So to get down here and change these manual hoop sizes, I'm going to click enter hoop size and change my hoop to 180 by 180. 180 millimeters is 18 centimeters. And then you'll see it no longer visualizes the hoop with all the brackets and everything, but it gives us the hoop space. So now I say, okay, okay. Alrighty, so uh, the purpose of this first lesson is just to do some real basics to familiarize you with what we've got going on here. First of all, on our screen up the top left corner, we have all our housekeeping, your saves and your undos. Undo here will be your best friend by the time you get stuck into doing lots of digitizing. Then underneath we have a series of tabs. You'll note it feels a little bit wordish in the, um, as in Microsoft Word, in the way it's laid out. It's done like that on purpose so that you feel it feels quite relatable. These things along the top are different tabs with different options. So if you choose another tab, so let's choose Super Design, for example, that guy there. We have a whole heap of features open up underneath relevant to that tab. So going back home, now that you have your hoop size set, we want to be able to see a grid behind us. If you don't have the grid turned on, anything that you want to control that you can see, you control it by going into the view tab, which is that guy there. So we're going to left click on view. And at the moment you'll see show grid up here. I'm going to left click on that and it's a toggle. So click it on, click it off, click it on, click it off. And now I can view my grid. So just remembering if it's something that you can see and you want to control how you see it, you want to go into your view tab. Alrighty, so we're going to go home. And a good rule of thumb is to go home after you go into every tab. So if you're doing something in another tab, go home when you're done and then you won't get lost. All right, so from here, we're going to straight up just bring in a quick automated embroidery uh, design from our super design tab just here. So we're going up to super design tab and clicking. And this is a great range of pre-installed and quite editable embroidery designs. So on the left hand side, we first of all have a category that we can choose from. And if we go up and down, there is lots and lots and lots of different categories where when we pick the little design it is automated for us so we're going to go back up to flowers and i'll show you what i mean so flowers 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 and leaves just here left click 
And it's not just this row here, all of these. These are all designs that we can create by just clicking on them. Now they're better than an embroidery design that you can bring in that somebody else has digitized because they are completely are scalable. You can make them larger, you can make them smaller to fit with what you're doing and then the stitches are calculated when you are done. Let's pick, oh, I think we'll do, let's do this cute little flower here. So hover over it and just left click to pick it. So that's highlighted here. And now we're going to choose the size that we want this to be and let's make this, so hovering over size, let's make it 20 millimetres, which is 2 centimetres. And now that we've done that, we are going to left click on apply. So what apply will do is it will say, okay, you want this flower and you want it to be 20 millimetres, go ahead and I will create a little flower for you. And there it is there. So looking at your screen on your left hand side, this is a new feature in my SoNet. This is your film strip that lets you see and reorder things in your embroidery tab, which is new and actually really cool. And I can't believe we live without it as long as we did. We have our hoop here in the middle of the screen and right over here on the right, we have our design panel with information about the embroidery design. So here we have the number of stitches, which is 450, uh, the number of colors, which is two, the width of the embroidery design, which is 21 millimeters, and the height, which is 20. There's two colors, and if we hover over the yellow, you'll see on the screen here, look real quick over here, yellow turns blue, so you can tell which color applies to what part of the design, and underneath red, which turns yellow, ironically, so that you can see it's that part of the embroidery design. So we now have our design all sorted. If we want to change the size of this design, we're going to, for good habit, go home. And you'll notice that this design here, we don't have any resize function turned on. If you're used to using resize, or if you've been told to use resize before, we don't need this because the embroidery design actually technically doesn't exist yet. This is all theory. So if we go ahead and accept it, that embroidery design will become an actual design, but right now it is theoretically a flower. So by grabbing this corner and pulling it up, you'll notice I can wiggle the corner around here and it changes the ratio of our little flower and then let it go. You see your stitches here recalculated to 944, but we don't want this flower looking all funky like that. So we're going to go right up to undo and just click undo. Now when we take our flower up, we're going to hold the corner, but at the same time, I'm also holding down the shift key. So that means it doesn't matter where I wiggle my mouse around, it will only scale that design up or down proportionately. So you can see we still have a nice little flower. It's not all squishy no matter what I do with my mouse. And when we've got to where we're going, letting go of the shift and the left click. And now you'll see it's recalculated that flower into 1500 stitches. Of course, the nature of the flower has changed a lot because all those little stitches here, they look cuter when it was a small flower. Now it's a bigger one. The actual effect has changed. So I'm going to go up to undo and undo that. And we're going to scale it up just a little tiny bit, like so. And 713, I'm happy with that. And it's 36 millimeters. Now, hang on a second. I hear you think, Penny, I want that to be more accurate than that. So let's undo. Whoops, my mistake. Sorry, guys. I clicked on the hoop here instead of the undo. Let's change this again, but instead of doing it by guessing, we are going to, from our home tab, scoot over to modify design. Not to be mistaken with modify tab, and if I could give feedback to the people that made this software, having two different parts called modify is a little confusing. Having modify right over the top of modify, incredibly confusing. We want modify design. We're going to click on modify design, and we're going to make this design 120% bigger. So we're going to change this percentage here. So you'll notice it's percent from 116, 120% and say, okay. So we have a recalculated flower and we have it at 530 stitches has been recalculated, but we don't necessarily know that we want the percentage to change. We might actually want it to be 
let's say we want it to be 30 millimeters, three centimeters across, we're going to go into modify design again. We can only change the percent, but we are given the size over here. So we're going to click up our percentage, but we are going to look here while we do it. So clicking up until this number, we're going for our width by the looks of this one here, is at 30 millimeters. There you go. So now this says 30, which happens to be 143%. We have now set that embroidery design to the size that we actually want. So we can scale that design up and down with our modified design, but we have to do it by looking at the percentage, working with the percentage, but looking at the size. Got it? Cool. So say OK. And there is our resized embroidery design. Groovy. So we have our super design here. We opened up super design and found our flowers category here. We went through our flowers and found the flower that we want here. We set the size to 20 millimeters here. And we chose apply here. And that gave us our little flower. We can control the design info. Sorry, we can see the design information here on the design panel. We can see the colors, and if we get into the habit of going home here, we can then change the actual size of that embroidery design to anything we want by going into modify design. All right, step one sorted. Now, let's zoom in so we can get a better look on this flower. So if you whoosh your eyes down to here, you will see our zoom section of the software. So this is drag to zoom where we click and drag over and we zoom in and we can see nice and close to get out of that close up we need to go back down and hit the four way arrow which is zoom to fit so click left click on our zoom drag boop and there it is zoomed in left click on our four way arrow back to fit the screen. You'll notice it's the hoop fitting the screen, not the embroidery design. You can also use this slider here to make your view closer or further apart. But the thing about this slider is your computer has to refresh every time and it can take a little while. So I tend not to use the slider very much, particularly not right now because you can't see how many tabs I've got open on my computer. So I don't use the slider much. I tend to use this percentage button here. So I'm going to click, I want a nice tight view on that flower. So I'm going to click 400%. And there is my flower here. And then when I'm finished, fit to screen. I want to zoom in very close, change to 800%. Boop. And you can get in nice and close. And then four way arrow takes you out. Zooming is one of the things that you need to really practice to get right with any sort of editing software because it's what makes things easier for you and it's one of the things that can frustrate you because you end up looking in places you don't want to be and you get a bit lost. So I would highly recommend getting comfortable with your zoom, exercise up and down a few times, zoom in and zoom out and I love this drop down box to do it nice and fast. Zoom in, four way arrow to zoom out. Alright, so now that you've got this done here, we want to save this. And at the moment, as I said, it is a theoretically an embroidered design, so we can still edit and do things to it. But we've done all this hard work resizing it. We don't want to make a mistake and lose it. So as we progressively work with our software, we want to keep saving. And instead of hitting these shortcuts here, because we've still got a few training wheels on, we need to actually get into the habit of using file. So we're going to open up our file section, and we want to go down to save as. So with your save as, left click, and you want to find a place on your computer where you will be able to find where you put it. So I've got documents, my Sonet training videos, and this video at the moment is called untitled.vp4. Now let's change it to something that means something. So let's do a YouTube lesson one. And underneath you will see it says Husqvarna Viking FAF VP4 and it's the only option you've got. I'm going to say OK, well save, and then explain to you what VP4 is. 
VP4 is the language that tells all of this information that's editable on this embroidery design. It's not just the embroidery design itself, but it's all the things that makes it editable in this software. So what you are doing is you are saving this embroidery design in its native language of VP4, which is the native language of this software. Once you want to actually embroider it, you will need to change it to the native language of your particular sewing machine. So if you have a Janome, it'll be Jeff, and if it's a brother, it'll be Pears, and if it's a Husqvarna or Fafra, you know, each language of its own, you will export it to suit that. So file, save as, we'll save it as VP4, which is the native language of this software, and then file, export will actually then give you the ability to choose what native language for your sewing machine you would like to export this as. So I've got myself a nice couple of brothers so I'm going to choose PES and now that software design will get translated to PES so that my brother can understand it. Cool? Cool. Okay, let's look at the other couple of things here. Now, first and foremost, down here, it has chosen for me the 130 by, uh, sorry, 160 by 260 hoop that I last selected. So basically, whatever you selected last time, software's really clever. It just keeps it in its memory and says, yo, I noticed she used this last time. Do you want to use this again? If you do need to change your hoop, go ahead and do it now. Choose change hoop. And you can either choose from your drop downs here or again enter your size over here. I'm going to just accept that I have a 160 by 260. I'm super happy with that. Then up here at this stage, I like to turn off my color sort. We'll explain later on a little bit more why that's important, but essentially turning color sort off at this point is a good habit to get into for starters. So from here, we're going to go ahead and remember it's brother, color sort's turned off, hoops all good to go. We're going to say, okay. And so now it is going to the uh, your computer and you are going to need to find, oh, don't look at all my file names here. My standard training videos. And now, YouTube Lesson 1 exported. Because we did save as, and we called it YouTube Lesson 1, it's brought up the same name but added exported to the end. I highly recommend that you keep exported there because it is easy to sort through your embroidery designs and separate them from your embroidery software files if you have the word exported in there. So I'm going to accept it and you'll see here it's PEZ because that's what we told it to do and then export. And now that is done. Alrighty, so wasn't a very exciting lesson first time around, but it's a good one to get you started. Uh, next lesson along, we're gonna take this and actually add some lettering to it. Alrighty, I hope you can tune in. Don't forget that, um, oh, I hate to seem like one of those peeps, but if you could give me a, a like or a subscribe, that'd be helping me out. But we do private software lessons at Mike Sewing Machine Repairs all the time. One hour, one-on-one -on -one lessons as regularly as you want them. And this is the sort of thing that if you spend the time to learn this software, you will get heaps and heaps and heaps of satisfaction out of it. And you'll probably find yourself creating embroidery designs on here way more than you do actually do embroidery once you get it in your teeth. Alrighty guys, I will see you on the next lesson. Thank you for watching today. Bye. Oh, press that button.